Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we will be looking at part two of how to leave your legacy, how to find purpose after the age of 50. If you haven't seen the original, please go here and watch this video first. It explains about generational purpose and the intent of these videos and it gives you 10 more ways to find purpose. I will talk about three parts. Sharing your wisdom and talents, championing the planet, which can be controversial, so you can just skip that if you don't care about it. And the third one is leaving a legacy of health and wellness. So number 11, write a memoir. Inspire others with your journey. So we each have a story to tell. So a book is such a fantastic way to leave a legacy for generations to come that will help not only your family, but the world at large. Your experience is your own. However, your wisdom can impact so many more people. And if you lived a particularly adventurous life, have it published after your death or two decades from now or whatever you think you can handle. <laughs> Remember that storytellers were held in high esteem in many societies and you have a story to tell. We all do and people can benefit from it. Storytellers and writers try to, to make sense of life for us regular people. Even if you don't have an answer, you have a viewpoint. Number 12, start a blog or podcast. Share your voice and reach a global audience. I mean, so many people need better information out there. There is just too much coming in, but most of that is misinformation. If you have an expertise, go for it. Share your knowledge in a podcast or a blog. Number 13, we've mentioned this before, but teach a class online. That's something you can do. Just use your cell phone, literally post yourself explaining about something, whatever your expertise was. Uh, I mean, if you are a mathematician, make sense of mathematics. If you're a philosopher, share your thoughts. You can share your expertise and you can inspire passion. My sister is an embroiderer. She does a beautiful job. It is a true work of art. She teaches it to fellow embroidery enthusiasts. She does it on Instagram, I think, and uh, just super quick little ways to do this stitch or, or another. Sometimes, you know, people are very visual. So do that. Number 14, become a life coach. Guide others to find their own purpose. Now, wouldn't that be an excellent way for a retired psychologist or a psychiatrist to help people reach their goals in life? Because you have all this experience and you can do this online or just have a little program in your local area. Word of mouth spreads really quickly. Uh, number 17, create art that inspires. Paintings, music, sculptures. Live your mark in this world. And this is if you do have a natural talent or if you're just working or finding that talent within yourself and a way to express yourself in other than in words. You can leave that for your beautiful family and they will cherish those sculptures and those pictures of um, water pictures or mugs that you've created. But you will, if you're really talented, that can become a second career at the time in your life. And if not, whatever you create will be enjoyed by yourself and your family. Number 18, start a YouTube channel. Entertain, educate, empower millions. We all hope to have millions of people watch our shows, which I think I'm getting up to the millionth viewer. Not follower, but viewer, which is kind of cool, to, the idea that a million people have seen my shows. I have touched these people's lives. I know that because I hear from them every single day. So if that is important to you, educate. 
empower, entertain by creating a YouTube channel. Number 19, write children's books, spark imaginations, plant seeds of hope. Give basic life lessons to take them through life. And isn't that what all children's book is about? You know, having a little message at the end of the day that helps them cope with a situation. It's a life skill set um, that you're giving your children or the children that are reading these books. I personally still love reading children's books for the very black and white way we look at things. Sometimes it helps us find that true north when we're um, challenged with decisions that are very ethical. So always go back to your children's books. <laughs> Number 20, compose music that touches hearts. Leave a legacy of melody. Sing. Sing at church groups. Put together a singing club to uplift and entertain residents at retirement homes throughout the years. I know that schools usually drive their orchestra kids to retirement homes to entertain them. But if you have a beautiful voice, go sing for them. Sing at church. Actually, for one period in my life, I actually sang just for fun, just to uplift my spirits. You can't be depressed when you're singing. You can't be sad. It's beautiful. So that's it for this group. The next group is championing the planet. And this can be a little bit controversial, but you can always skip it. But let me tell you, I'm, I may not think that we're destroying our planet. There is plenty of green space out there but I want to do my part to keep my planet as healthy as it can be and as beautiful as it can be as I enjoy gardening and looking at sunsets and looking at beautiful nature scenes all over the world. So why not try to keep it clean? So number 21, reduce your carbon footprint. Live sustainably and inspire others. If the environment is important to you, this is a great starting point make changes and do your research and find out which little measurements you can take to improve your footprint on earth to spend less to keep this world clean donate time or money into ventures like cleaning a beach or cleaning your neighborhood i do have a link and i'll put it in the description where we try to remove plastics from the oceans you may consider donating to that cause or whatever cause you might find touches you the most 22 plant a tree every year grow a legacy one leaf at a time and i love this one for one i love gardening and trees give you privacy they give you shade for your home so your electric bill will be reduced it's playing double duty right right there. I have a small suburban American backyard and I have several trees growing because I've learned to espalier. To espalier is to cut your tree so that they're flat against the surface and they will produce, they're all fruit trees. I have an entire wall of fruit trees and I intend on continuing growing as many fruit trees as I have sun to sustain them around the yard. So every year pick a tree and plant it. You will be so happy. At least I smile every time I look at it. And it's a lesson on patience too because it takes years for fruit trees to produce. 23. Start a community compost bin. Turn waste into fertile ground. Now I don't know how you would go about doing that. I don't compost. I don't know how. I have a pile of leaves but I have diseased leaves in there so I can't put it back in my garden but eventually it does break down so it's just becoming dirt I don't put it out into the environment I keep it in my backyard but if you know how to compost and you know how to create a community area where people can drop their compost some people are willing to do that and all I have to do is set it up and um, spread the word by mouth or again use social media to spread the word 
in uh, groups in your neighborhood. Now, I would love to get some of that compost from my vegetable garden. 24. Volunteer at a, an animal shelter. Rescue a furry friend. Mend broken hearts. This one would be very difficult for me. I think I would bring every single dog home. Maybe even cats and I'm more of a dog person. So I don't know how people can handle that, going and volunteering. Hopefully, you know, shelters are becoming more of no-kill shelters. So if you can handle it, go for it. Those little puppies need some love during the daytime. Number 25, organize a beach cleanup. Leave the shore a little cleaner than you found it. My husband and I walk every morning. When I wrote this down, I said, that's something I can do. I will be bringing a plastic bag and gloves, and I'm gonna be picking up little trash that I find here and there. Even though the neighborhood once a week will do the total cleanup, I still walk every day. So every day I still find cans or empty cartons or something that got spilled from the uh, trash cans on accident and nobody ever brought it back in the house. So why not? It's easy. Number 26, educate others about climate change. Be the voice for our planet. So that's another class one. But if you are knowledgeable about the subject, I am not. Um, my political views don't align with that, but if yours do, I think that is a great way to teach those techniques of reducing your personal impact in the environment, if it's negative, of course, on one household at a time. Number 27, I love this one, support sustainable businesses, vote with your dollar and make a difference. Because of the industry I'm in, I see and I hear all the time of the impact, the negative impact that fast fashion has in the world. And so many companies, bigger companies, are aware that what they're producing is ending up in the landfills pretty quickly. So they usually have some programs that will counteract that, like planting extra trees, helping to reduce pollution, whatever it is that is, makes them environmentally friendly, buy into that. I would rather spend my money on a company that tells me they're doing something, even if they're not doing completely, they're doing something. And I'll do my part in the cyclical economy trying to purchase goods from secondhand shops or something like that but also will be investing on companies that are good to the environment number 29 create eco-friendly art turn trash into treasure inspire change also, another thing that you can do, how beautiful is that? Create beautiful monuments made out of trash. Don't make it look like trash, but you know, make it beautiful. Find a way to recycle those glass bottles and create something beautiful. Houston has a section that is really interesting where all the homes have these amazing mosaic works and they're all made with trash and I think that is a brilliant idea. It was a movement way back I think in the 70s when it started but it's something that we can still do today. Number 30, join a local environmental group. Be part of the solution not the pollution. So I love that if you're into the environment and you're very dedicated go ahead and put your efforts and money where your mouth is and um, my in-laws they are really involved in conservation so my father-in-law particularly volunteers his time as an accountant for an organization and he is constantly involved in ways that contribute to the environment by doing cleanups, picking up pests that are overspreading 
due to migration. He even saves the turtles once a year. It is fun for the person that's doing it because you become part of this lovely community of people that think like you. And you helping the environment. And the third one is leaving a legacy of health and wellness. Number 31, start a walking group. Get moving, build community. This is super fun. My neighborhood has a walking group and actually these people are pretty serious, but you can do something less drastic. Maybe two or three friends that walk every other day and catch up. What a great way to improve your health and the health of your friends. Number 32, share healthy recipes online or in a cookbook. Nourish bodies, inspire others. Now this one, I'm not a cook, but I do know of ways to get healthy recipes using artificial intelligence. So if you're interested, I can teach you how to get what you want. I'll do a video just for that. And it's so cool because um, you can give all your specifics of the things that you eat, you don't eat, and you can make it like make it healthy or make it Mediterranean diet or whatever it is that you want. And then give me a shopping list to go along with it. So that's something I might uh, create another video. But me in the meanwhile, cook healthy. If you're a good chef, go for it. Share those recipes online or write a cookbook. If you're part of a little organization, everybody together can write a recipe for the book. So fun. Number 33, become a certified fitness instructor. Help others find their joy in movement. Love that. Like if you're really into exercise, that is the thing that you love. Either volunteer your time or actually go get a second job or create a little program for pregnant moms to get fit for the delivery or for their after they have the babies. What can you do to help them to get back into a, an exercise routine and get their bodies strong to run after these little kids right in time for when the toddlers start running around. 34. Volunteer at a hospital or clinic. Share your time, mend hearts. This is a great one too. Especially if you had somebody in your family who has spent time in a hospital. You know how much somebody walking in and caring just makes such a huge difference. To bring a toy, to bring coloring books, to bring to be a candy girl. Is that what they're called? I forget. And um, bring joy to those kids or older people in the hospital. 35, advocate for mental health awareness. Break the stigma, bring light to darkness. I do think that mental health awareness has improved tremendously. The stigma has been reduced, especially since COVID become somebody who fosters the idea that being mentally healthy is a plus for the community not only for the individual but for the people that are connected to them 38 teach yoga or meditation classes share the gift on in of inner peace yeah or qigong and things like that those are gentle exercises especially in our age that will strengthen our bodies and our, our focus and um, our quality of life. 39, write a guide to natural pain relief. Share your wisdom, heal without harming. I love that too. You know, there are ways through meditation. Pain science is a real sophisticated thing nowadays with um, neurological advancements that we have accomplished. So if you watch Huberman, he has a whole entire episode about pain that you can overcome it, creating neural pathways that can improve your ability to deal with pain. So if you're an expert in that, so many people live in pain, wouldn't that be a wonderful way to leave a mark in this world by alleviating pain without medication? Number 40, 
Start a support group for those facing chronic illness. Be a beacon of hope in the storm. Absolutely needed. I suffer from psoriatic arthritis. It took me an entire year and a half to figure out that that's what was wrong with me. I was miserable. And once I had that diagnosis, even though it is life changing because for the rest of my life I will have it until new technology comes up with something new, um, it gave me such a sense of relief. So that experience being shared with people who are going through some sort of chronic uh, disability that they don't know where it's coming from and what's wrong, they just know something is wrong, would uh, liberate them, would give them hope and creating such a support group would be an amazing way to help others. All right, so that's it for today. Tomorrow, I hope to give you a few more. Let me see, maybe tomorrow I can give you 20 more. We'll keep treading. <laughs> see you tomorrow.